Welcome back to the Blade Lab, where we're going to be doing some more blade testing. This time, we are doing the Heavyweight Smackdown. Uh, we have from left to right the Spyderco PM2 in Maximet Steel, the Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight in S110V, the Spyderco Manix 2 in 15V, and last but not least, the uh, Spyderco PM2 in S90V. I've uh, previously tested the edges uh, for each knife. They all come in um, 80 or 85 grams on my best tester. All of them except for the S90V PM2 have at least two and uh, in most cases probably three or four edges on them already. The uh, the S90V PM2 is a is a pretty new knife, and I believe this is the uh, I'm pretty sure it's the first edge on there, so that may come into play. Um, as you'll see later on, I'm gonna throw in a uh, Tuya knife. I believe it's called the Wrath uh, in S90V, just to uh, have something outside of the Spider Cove family to uh, see, uh, just to compare. So. Um, the S110V knife, um, as I had it, was at about 13 and a half degrees. Um, all the other ones are at 15 degrees. So um, in this uh, clip, I'm just going to quickly um, raise, <coughs> sorry, raise that edge angle to 15 degrees on the uh, on my Tormek T8. I'm using a uh, 600 grit CBN wheel. Um, which I, well, is pretty much what I'm using these days uh, for all my edges. I don't like to go much higher than that. Um, the other knives in this will have been uh, stropped probably quite a few times since they've been sharpened, unlike uh, obviously this one that I'm sharpening now. So um, I don't think that will affect the best tests. It might, it would affect how the knife actually cuts you know when you're cutting because they're going to be uh, a little bit slicker um, edges you know you're, you're going to lose some tooth every time you strop a knife and eventually even if it's sharp you're probably going to want to resharpen it uh, just to add some toothiness back so um, because this knife was already close to 15 degrees um, I really had a, a burr after the first pass. I mean, so I'm just doing two or three passes just to make sure, um, just, you know, really just to make sure. I could have stopped uh, way before I did. Um, but, you know, it's not, it's not taking off much steel. And uh, this way, instead of having, you know, maybe like a 15 degree micro bevel, um, we'll wind up with a sort of a thicker 15 degree edge and that's probably um, more fair uh, for the competition with the other knives in this case so yeah um, what can I say else as I'm going over this uh, if you hear some uh, background noise it's uh, either my wife in the kitchen or uh, you got some people taking down a uh, oak tree in my next door neighbor's yard so uh, that's if you hear some chainsaws uh, unfortunately that's what it is so yeah I love the Tormek it's uh, it's so fast so easy so accurate and I you know it just puts on a great edge previously I've used uh, fixed angle systems and I still have I still have uh, a couple different fixed angle syst systems that I like, but they're just slower. You know, they're they're more controlled. You might have more uh, grid options, but they can be so slow, especially when uh, reprofiling. So I believe what I'm doing now is I'm just checking uh, for the burr, and you know, because this is a 16 grit six I'm sorry 600 grit wheel, it's. Um, it's hard to really minimize the burr on it. You got to uh, 
even if you go super light and fast, you're going to have a pretty pretty good sized burr. So what I have on the other side of the machine is a 1000, it's actually a very well worn now, uh, 1000 grit CBN wheel. It's probably, in reality, probably closer to about a, I don't know, 1500 grit at this point, just because it's been, it's uh, sharpened hundreds and hundreds of knives. So I'm just going dry, and all I'm doing is uh, going sort of quick and light just to uh, reduce the burr and uh, make it easier to uh, strap up. And okay, let's do one more pass. If I was doing uh, significant work, I would flip that uh, water reservoir next to the wheel and uh, put some water on it just to uh, keep the, really just to keep the uh, dust down. So now I'm going to, this is basically my, my sharpening procedure that you're seeing here. What I'm going to do now is uh, go to the, the uh, Ken Onion Work Sharp, Work Sharp Ken Onion with the blade grinder attachment. I use, I pretty much just use this for stropping now. Um, I have a bunch of leather belts. I just put one on that has one micron compound. I'm going to do um, two passes in this case right at the edge angle 15 degrees or as close as I can get you know it's somewhat freehand at this point um, so this is uh, trying to take off pretty much the remainder of the burr so there's one side there's the other side um, as you look at this keep in mind that at the very end after I do all these tests I'm going to go back and do this exact procedure on all the blades just to see how well they strop back um, with little effort. So that's completing second pass. And now I'm going to switch the belt uh, to one that has, it's another leather belt, but this one has uh, the Tormek PA70 honing compound on it. Um, which I find just works fantastic as a final step. It's, uh, I guess it's mostly aluminum oxide, which you wouldn't normally use on high vanadium steels, but um, trust me, it, uh, it really produces a super fine edge. Good. There's two. I should speed this up because it's not very entertaining. But... This method, um, you know, combining the Tormek and the Work Sharp is pretty quick and it produces, you know, in, in my experience, just very consistent, uh, very good results. I think, uh, I think I'm about to test this. Well, I will test it afterwards. And it comes to, I think, uh, 80 grams on the best scale, which is sharp and, you know, for, for a process that took altogether probably what was it five or six minutes um yeah and it's really the most time you can spend even if i'm reprofiling would be 10 minutes um and that that is damn good you know when you consider how long it can take on a uh, something like a um hepstone or any of the fixed you know the work chart fixed angle systems or any of those that use the uh, six inch stones, you know, you can you can literally spend an hour or more uh, trying to reprofile high vanadium edge like this. Obviously my focus is not going to work here. Sorry about that. Got to get a new camera. <laughs> Gave up. All right, so we'll test it and you will see that it does come in fact down to 80, which puts it pretty much uh, exactly where the other ones were. That. Um, when sharpening, so this is at, these are all 15 degrees. Um, when sharpening, you know, kitchen knives, for example, I, I also typically do 15 degrees. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I do 12. Um, actually, I'm doing that more and more. And, you know, it's this same process will pretty much produce these results or better. Uh, every time and it's just quick and easy 
So that's good. Um, just showing here that uh, it did in fact come to 15 degrees. And you can see the small dot in front of that sort of crescent is the, the remnants of the previous edge, which was about 13 and a half. Okay, so here's all the knives, and that is the uh, Tuya Wrath. I believe that's a design by Dave Warren. Excellent, excellent knife for, uh, I want to say that it was $200 or thereabouts. It's S90V, uh, titanium scales, it's frame lock, it's got the frag. The only problem with it is that the uh, pocket clip will shred your pants because uh, it's right on top of that frag. Okay, so now I'm doing the, the uh, rope cut test on the Maximet blade. Uh, this It's wearing uh, flytanium scales, if you didn't recognize it. I'm doing uh, 30 cuts of half-inch manila rope uh, for each knife. Uh, yeah, I've sped this up just to uh, make this... Uh, Hopefully less boring. This is the uh, Manix 2 in 15V. Uh, with the special heat treatment by uh, Big Brown Bear. Sean, whose name I, last name I can't remember. He's got a, a good YouTube channel too. You can check him out. So this is uh, it's cutting really well. I think it cut a little... The, uh, I found the PM2... Uh, to be irritating to my hand, just I couldn't find a good place to good grip without sort of shredding my hand. The uh, Manix 2 is more comfortable. So this is now the uh, the uh, PM2 and S90V. Da, da, da. As you can see, I've sort of ended up sort of going back on the handle instead of trying to choke up on it because the, uh, the jimping is just uh, it's pretty abrasive. So now we have the Manix in S110V, Manix 2 Lightweight. I'm not noticing a, a huge amount of difference in effort um, with any of these blades. Maybe I'll take this, uh, take a minute now to just sort of talk about what my expectations were in this test and, and just about it in general. These are all uh, very high-end, you know, wear-resistant steels. I would went into it expecting them to do similarly, uh, according to uh, Laren, Dr. Laren Thomas's uh, catcher testing. You would expect the uh, Maximet to have the most wear resistance. Uh, I believe I believe it would be the 15V next. Um, then the S90V, and lastly the S110V. Um, you can only tell so much from, uh, you know, from the actual steel, you know, like vanadium content, different elements in, that are in it, because they're, you know, as Dr. Thomas says, there's, there's a lot going on in the heat treat and, and whatnot, but, uh, FYI, the uh, the 15V has about 14.6% vanadium. The um, the uh, Maximet is about 6%. The S110V 9%, and the S90V also uh, 9%. There are um, what sort of separates the Maximet is that it also has 13% uh, tungsten and uh, 10% cobalt, I believe. So now we're looking at the uh, the results of the test. You can see the 15V top three were very close, as expected. The 15V came in slightly ahead, then the S110, then the Maximet. Uh, the surprise was that the Spyderco S90V came in last. I was not expecting that. It, if I'm being honest, I expected the uh, you know the Chinese two-year knife to uh, sort of lag, um, and it did not. <laughs> it was an, an impressive performance. So now uh, we're doing the cardboard testing, and what I did was uh, basically eight cuts in both directions on this one sheet of very stiff uh, cardboard. It's very thin, but uh, as I've described before, 
real hard to cut. It's harder to cut than your typical Amazon box. Uh, and then I do, I think, four or five cuts on the, on the last piece that's remaining. Uh, so just going through all of them. Again, um, they all cut it pretty well. It's, it is hard stuff to cut. I'm, I'm using the trash can there to sort of prop it up because it's hard to hold on to uh, while you're cutting it. This one, the um, Spyderco S90V, I uh, accidentally cut it the long way first and then the short way. I don't think it really makes a difference. Same number of cuts. Uh, this is the Tuya knife. That's a real good slicer, this one. It has, it's uh, of all the knives, especially on the hollow section, it's a compound grind, but on the hollow section, it's, it's really thin behind the edge. Um, good cutter. Now we're just going through and doing the testing. I'm not going to uh, narrate each score, I don't think, uh, because at the end I will, uh, as I did before, post up uh, the results in uh, written form. But, um, you know, we can, I can uh, sort of talk about um, the way things came out. And I will say that uh, overall, you know, pretty much as with the uh, the previous rope cut test, uh, things came out pretty much as I expected them to. You know, all as, again, these are all high end, uh, very wear resistant steels, and they should perform roughly on par. They they all should perform well. Um, like I said before, the you know the, there is a uh, you would expect a certain uh, order for them to come in, and they came in uh, finally, you know, close to that order. We'll talk about it more when we actually get to the um, final results. The and again, just like in the previous one, the the uh, what stuck out like a sore thumb was the uh, PM2 and S90V, which uh, really uh, trailed. All the others pretty badly. I'm gonna to have to go back and maybe put another uh, a new edge or two on that and uh, redo this test just to see if uh, maybe it's because the edge is a little bit burned from uh, from being a, a newish knife or whether maybe it's just one of those uh, rare um, heat treats that didn't come out uh, ideally. You don't find that often uh, with Spyderco, that's for sure. But it can happen, you know. It happens to nobody's perfect. So we'll just keep going through this. Why, oh, why didn't I speed it up more? Yes, yes, we see. Just keep going. For the love of God. Are we on the last one yet? Let's see. Yes. It's the uh, the Tuya. And this was the other surprise to me, you know, is I don't uh, don't normally expect I don't expect um, quality Chinese knives to have bad heat treatments, but I do um, just from experience, expect them to have kind of average, you know, sort of so-so heat treat. Um, I think they err on the side of uh, being conservative. They're not going to be, you know, sort of doing any kind of radical heat treatments for the most part. Um, but so I really expected this one to come in um, in last place because of that. Um, whereas, in fact... It did uh, really, really well. It didn't, you know, I think that, okay, so that last 160 reading, I don't think that's valid because it's probably too close to the tip. I think the first one is, is going to be the more accurate one. And it was, and it was still good. So let's uh, give it its due.
Now I'm just testing closer to the tip on the 15V just to see. So yeah, that came in, I think, a little better than the uh, lower down reading also. So I think I just threw the, ended up throwing those out and just going with the first reading. A better test would have uh, done multiple multiple uh, best tests for each one and average them and uh, compare it that way. But, you know... This is not uh, this is not the NIH here. This is uh, this is the Blade Lab. Okay, so here's the final result. Maximet came in first. 15V, uh, very close behind. S90V from Tuya, very close to that. The S110V, um, a little a little bit of a gap there, so that's not insignificant. And then the Spyderco S90V, uh, trailing the pack pretty significantly. Um, leaving, leaving that out, this is, uh, the top four results are where you would expect them to be based upon the steel. You know, Maximet, uh, should have the best edge retention, then 15V, then S90V, then S110V. So, uh, just confirming, uh, that maybe my test isn't completely bogus. Um, and, you know, it's always nice to have... For me, anyway, maybe you don't care. Maybe you, certainly, uh, Laren's uh, tests are more scientific and uh, more controlled and better. So maybe you just say, oh, well, it's just, why would I even bother with your uh, stupid um, garage test that you're doing here? But I, I think it's always good to have more data and, uh, and maybe something more uh, sort of real world cutting stuff that uh, people normally cut. Um, that's why I like uh, Pete's tests from Cedric and Ada. And uh, so why not add a few more data points, as I've said before. So I thank you for stopping by, and I'll be doing some more of this. I think next up I will do some uh, lower-end steels, same test, and see uh, how it compares. And y'all have a good one. Bye now.